Hi guys, my name is Tom Hollenbeck. Thank you so much for joining VBF Online. Please visit our website, vbf.org, to listen to some of our latest messages. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to donate to our ministry, you can do so by going to our website and clicking the Tithe Here tab. If you have a check, please mail it in. If you have a cool God story, we would love to hear it. You can send it to share at vbf.org. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the message.
There is healing when we sing together and it's powerful when our faith rises in the room. So let's pray this together. Lord, we come before you today. We thank you first for your goodness. We thank you for your love and your grace. And God, everything that we're battling with, every struggle that we came in facing, right now we return it to you. We lay it at your feet because of who you are. You are a comforter. You are a shield. You are a strength. Those are promises that you gave us in scripture. So thank you, God, for this time of worship that we get to come together and freely worship you, freely give everything back to you, Jesus. And we say yes and amen.
I'm Liz and I just wanted to take a moment to invite you out to our event happening next Sunday, April 23rd at 12.30 p.m. in Station 316. I'm going to have a cool opportunity to speak with Debbie Vietti and Brenda Ratliff and I'm going to be asking them questions, but here's the thing. I don't want all these questions to come from me. I want them to come from you. So if you could take a moment to please go to vbfwomen.com and submit your questions along with your RSVP. We would love to be able to ask some of those questions to them. There's so much going on in our lives and Debbie and Brenda have been through so many things at this church in their lives and we just wanna have a moment with them to learn from them, to grow with them, to laugh with them. And it's not gonna be the same without you. So please join us and if you want childcare, make sure you RSVP at vbfwomen.com and submit that application as well. Hope you have an amazing day and I better see you there soon. Good morning church, how you guys doing? You guys doing good? You guys are awake. If this is your first time, I want to say welcome to VBF. I want to welcome everyone online as well. We do have a free gift just for you, so when you leave this place, don't forget to stop by the VIP booth and get your free gift right there. There is a QR code behind me. If you can take your phones out, don't take a picture. Uh, just take your phones out and a little website should pop out. You click on it and then that's how you stay connected with everything that we have going on. Uh, whether that's through text or email, you can sign up. And this is all of our events, uh, our Bible studies and uh, upcoming things that we have in our community. So if you wanna stay connected, please do so in that way. That, that video was saying um, that announcement is for the ladies. Hey. You guys have a lunch today at 12.30 p.m., so you do not want to miss out. So as soon as you leave here, don't go home and take your beauty naps just yet. Go straight into Station 316. The lunch is free, so you get fed physically and fed spiritually. Come on, somebody. Um, that's with uh, Debbie Vietti and Brenda Ratliff. They're going to be sharing their wisdom, so you don't, don't want to miss out. Um, and then we have a conference happening at the Tehachapi campus. It's an online conference called Blended and Blessed. This is for blended families, uh, step family couples, single parents, uh, dating couples with kids, and those who care about date, uh, blended families. You can do so, sign up, RSVP for that. That's going to be April 29th from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And lunch there is also going to be provided. We also have another announcement for the ladies, uh, the women's gathering. So we're, just, we're spoiling you guys uh, this week. So Tuesday, May 2nd, you guys have two gatherings, one at 9.30 and then one at 6 p.m. And this is going to be at the Northwest Campus. So you can sign up um, online and for more information, do the same thing. And then we have a Mother Sundance. So I know, I know. Mother Sundance is happening Saturday, May 6th at 6 p.m. at the Northwest Campus. So you can contact the church for more information and uh, have some fun. For more information about VBF this month, there is a newsletter in the back of everyone's chair, um, and that's to stay connected with everything that we have going on. Front row, I apologize, you don't have a, a, a back seat, that's okay. Uh, and then we do have a volunteer of the week. We have Rod and Stacy Stansberry. They're amazing, They're, their family is amazing. If uh, if you see him around, give Rod like a wet willy for me. But uh, they've been attending uh, VBF for a while. They've been at the nursery and uh, helping out at the parking lot ministry out at the Northwest Campus uh, for the past three years. And uh, they're just a fun couple. So if you see them, just encourage them. Say hello. And last but not least, tithes and offerings. You guys know the drill. We have these red baskets. We have a kiosk in the foyer. You can go to our website at vbf.org or mail a check-in to 2300 East Brunish Lane. But with that being said, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We have another amazing worship song, and then we're going to get started with what the Lord is doing here today. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Let's pray this. God, we give you glory for today. God, for the breath in our lungs. God, we give you glory for the good and the bad happening in our lives because we know that you are faithful. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love that we do not deserve, but you so freely give it. And so we ask right now in Jesus' name that you would bless the offering. God, that you would bless the receiver. 
Lord, and that you would just bless this time that we have in your presence. And we lift this prayer up to you in Jesus' name. And I got people set. Amen. Well, come on, let's stand together. Run for cover, but the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Yes, I do. Still, the miracle that I just can't get over, my name. Is registered in heaven. Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever. Come on, sing it out. This is my testimony from dead to life. This grace rewrote my story. And I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. The sons and daughters bought with blood and washed in water. To sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Oh, our God will finish what He started. Come on, let's sing it out. This is my testimony from dead to life. This grace we wrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Cause greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Cause greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Cause greater things are still to come. Testimony from dead to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, you've been so good, God. Come on, church. Give God a big shout today. You may be seated. Good morning. How you guys doing? I think it's still morning, right? We got time. Well, uh, I haven't been around for a while, but I'm back for a minute, and uh, we'll see see how it goes. 
Um, my name is Josh Vietti, and uh, I'm somewhat related to the past, the other pastor here. He's my dad, so in case you're wondering. Uh, but uh, today, I'm excited about the message because it is an important one. It's something that, uh, that I uh, have learned a lot about in the last year, in the last two years, actually. And um, so I want to share that with you today. But I was going to say something to you that I said to the first service. And the fact that you showed up today is something, okay? It really is. Because you showed up today not to hear uh, some people sing songs, and they're really great, right? Not to hear a sermon, not to hear, uh, you know, not even to see each other, even though it's great to see each other. But we showed up today for a reason. We showed up today to connect with the living God, right? And I understand, I understand that some of you have trouble with that. You know, maybe it's hard to uh, believe that. Maybe it's hard to understand that. Uh, but today, I'm going to hopefully uh, put the pieces together, at least help uh, you put the pieces together. And so that's the, the goal of today. And so let's go ahead and pray, and uh, we'll get right to it, shall we? Father, we come to you humbly, Lord. And we ask you, Father, that you would reveal yourself to us today that you would show yourself to us. Lord, we need you individually. We need you as a church. We need you as a community. We need you as a country. We just need you. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would, you would take our hearts, you would take our minds, you would take our perspectives, and that you would anoint us, Lord, all of us, to hear your word and to follow you. Because you lead us into good places, not bad places. You lead us into free pastures, Lord. You do not lead us to brick walls. Lord, you lead us to freedom, and I pray that this morning that we would all feel that, and we would understand that, and that we would receive that today. And I thank you, Lord, and and, and for what you're doing already. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today, I'm talking to you guys about the purpose of pain, from hurting to healing. There is a purpose in pain. I think that some, some of us, when we first, you know, if, if you're a Christian, you give your life over to Jesus, you think, man... It's supposed to be good from here on out, right? And then you realize quickly that, that there's a lot of things that happen that, that you don't like, right, to say the least. Like, it's, it gets frustrating and it gets hard. Well, today I'm going to talk about pain and the purpose behind it. Because I think if we understand the reason for something, it's much easier to endure. And not only endure, but to understand how it will bring us uh, back to him. And so the purpose of pain, we'll get to that in a little bit. But first, I'm going to start with the sources of pain. There's three main sources of pain, all right? See, there's three main sources of pain. Or not. Okay, um, (laughs) I'm out of practice here. Uh, Number one. You. You are a source of your pain, right? Like we cause our own pain. How many of us have caused our own pain? Anybody, right? I'm at the top of the list. It was funny. There was a college kid at Cal State. I hope he made it today. I don't know if he made it, but he was asking us if uh, sinners are allowed to come to our church. I'm like, I'm like, I'm the biggest one, and I'm speaking on Sunday, so, uh, you know. But we cause our own problems so many times, right? We are the culprit. We could fix uh, everything sometimes if we would just get it together, right? Another source of pain is someone else. Some of you guys have actually been hurt by other people. And God understands that. Some of you have been hurt in your childhood. Some of you have been hurt in your childhood. You don't even realize that it's affecting you today as an adult. Some of you are being hurt right now by a, a loved one by someone who's supposed to be loving you, but they're not acting like it. Some of you are hurt by the decisions that your uh, family members or friends are making, and you can't control those decisions. Right? So other people hurt us sometimes, and sometimes it's just simply your environment. Right? Bakersfield's a rough community. To say the least. We, all, we, were all, we all were born into this, right, if we are from here. If you're not from here, welcome. Glad to have you. <laughs> Good luck. But it's a rough community, and, and, and there are a lot of things that we deal with just based on that, based on our upbringing, right, based on the neighborhood, based on those friends that we had that we love, right, based on just 
again, kind of goes back to us making decisions, but it's also just happenstance. So those are the sources of pain. There are four types of pain though today that I want to talk to you guys about. Four types of pain. I'm not going to worry so much about the sources because the sources are the sources. It is what it is. But the pain that you're dealing with today or maybe you might deal with tomorrow. Some of you are like, I'm fine. I'm pain free. I'm good. And if that's all three of you, right, we'll, we'll, uh, you guys can just, just listen and maybe share uh, uh, you know, with other people. But we're going to get into some preventative care a little bit later. But, but the four types of pain are this. Number one, the pain of doubt. The pain of doubt and cynicism. Number two, the pain of sickness. Right? And that could be physical. That could be mental. Could even be spiritual, right? The, number three is the pain of injury. The pain of injury, number four, is the pain of growth. And so we're going to kind of talk about these a little bit today, and then we're going to do communion, which would be the ultimate healing of coming to Jesus, right? So it's going to be good, and I, I, this is more of an experiential kind of service, right? So I want you to think right now. Think, think about it. Take a moment. What has God been speaking to you? Because he's not silent. He's not quiet. He's not ignoring you, right? So what has he been saying to you? What has he been trying to say to you? Sometimes if we're just honest, we know that answer already. And maybe today could be uh, kind of an icing on the top of that cake, right? So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the pain of doubt. In John chapter 20, we have a story of a man named Thomas. You guys know the name, right? Thomas, and he's known as the doubter. John 20, verse 25, I'm going to start reading halfway through. It says, unless I see, this is, this is Thomas talking to his friends, by the way. Have you guys ever had a conversation with your friends, and they're trying to convince you of something, but you're thinking, unless I see it myself, I'm not going to believe it, right? Especially if you know your friends. But John chapter 20, uh, halfway down in verse 25 says, this is Thomas saying to them that they're, they're telling him that Jesus had resurrected and he's walking around and he's showing himself. And he says this, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Unless I see it myself. See, we call Thomas the doubter, but I, I think a, a better term for Thomas is Thomas the cynic. I think that's more of a a term that we would understand in this modern day and age. How many of you guys have ever felt cynical about something? Not hard to do these days, right? We're constantly lied to in the media, government, people. We're constantly deceived. And so it's easy to become a cynic. It's easy to do the eye roll. It's easy to say whatever. But let me tell you something. It's dangerous when we do that with God. Some of us, we have the Bible verses, we know the scriptures, and we know what it says, and we've done this church thing so many times that it's easy for us to even do the eye roll here in church. It's easy for us to say, okay, here we go again. Same songs, same message, I've heard it before. But today, again, it's not about sitting there. It's not even about learning the Bible as much as it is about connecting with the God of the Bible. And so if there's anything that I can do today, it's to remind us that he's sitting there waiting for you. And, you know, sometimes we don't always get what we want from him, but we always get what we need. Anyway, that was a side note. So eight days later, Thomas is still a cynic, still a doubter. Eight days later, right, Jesus shows up. In verse 27, it says, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. He rolls up. He says, okay, Thomas, put your fingers here. And put your and, and see my hands and and put out your hand and he and he and place it in my side. And he said, "It's me. I'm here, right?" And then he looks at Thomas and he says this in verse 27. He says, "Do not disbelieve, but believe." And Thomas answered him and said, "My Lord and my God." Jesus said to him, "Have you believed because you have seen me?" And then Jesus looks at him and says this, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Those of us that are here today, yeah, that's us, actually, which is cool, right? 
those of us that are here today, we, we haven't really seen Jesus in the flesh. I mean, if you have, that's a miracle. That's awesome. I want to hear about it. But most of us haven't seen Jesus in the flesh, right? But we believe in him because of the experience. We believe in him because of the deliverance. We believe in him because of the salvation. We believe in him because he comes through constantly. Right? I mean, the fact that he died and took, off, took on all of our sins, took everything, so that we could walk into the throne room of God, just like the high priest did back in the day. By the way, if they walked in, they, they would tie like a rope to these guys' feet, because if they had any sin in their life, if they walked into the presence of God, they would die. Because they couldn't handle it. And they'd just have to drag them out. Right? But with us, because we have received him as Lord and Savior, we can walk right into that throne room, right? No matter what, even though we know, we know us, we know who we are sometimes, right? But he says, that's not who you are. You're my kids. It's pretty cool, right? Pretty neat. So the, the, the fix for doubt, the, the fix for cynicism is truth. Now, we all have two types of truths. We have the truth, the capital T truth, which is Jesus, okay? We have that. We all agree, if hopefully most of us agree, maybe not everyone, but most of us agree that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why we're here today, right? Yeah, we agree on that. But then beyond the capital T's, we all have our little, our lowercase T's, our little truths. The things that we just know we ought to do. The things that we know, the, the, the ways that we know we ought to be living. Like, we know these things. And, and I can't tell you what yours is. Only you can tell you what yours is, right? And the way to find out is just to simply be honest with yourself. Say, what is it that he's been calling us to? And if you're dealing with cynicism or doubt, I would encourage you to recommit to the big truths and the little truths in your life, right? The next uh, pain is the pain of sickness. In 2 Kings uh, chapter 5, we have a story of a guy named Naaman. Naaman, N-A-A-M-A-N. He was a mighty warrior. He was a commander of the army. He's one of those guys that you look at and you think, he's going to be all right. He's going to be fine. You ever meet these people? They're really tough. You know, they ha- seem like they have it all together. They're strong on the outside. They're strong on the inside. You think, that person's going to be just fine. Well, he had that, but he was also sick. He had a disease. His specific disease was leprosy. But there's all types of disease. There's mental disease, disease which I've learned a lot about lately, and there's, there's physical diseases. There's sickness, right? How many of you guys had COVID? It was terrible. Some of you guys were in the hospital. Some of you guys lost loved ones. Sickness is a real thing. But the story of Naaman is really interesting. Let me tell you why. Let me, let me just read it real quick and then we'll talk about it. In 2 Kings 5, verse 9, it says this. So Naaman, let me just give you some context real fast. Naaman lived in a foreign land in Syria and he was uh, told that there was this prophet in Israel by, by a young girl who they'd kidnapped, but that's, that's beside this point. They, they, this, this young Jewish girl told them that there's a prophet in Israel and his name's Elisha and he, he, will, he will heal you. And so Naaman, he goes to this man's house, this man Elisha's house, and he's expecting something big to happen. He's going to go and He had an idea of what this prophet was going to be like. He had um, expectations, right? Much like uh, we have when we go to the doctor, when we go, you know, see somebody who can help us with something, right? And so in verse 9, it says, So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean." says in 11, but Naaman was angry and went away saying, behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. So Naaman had these expectations, but Elisha, when Naaman came, didn't even get off of his lazy boy chair. He stayed there, chilled out. He said, "Ah, messenger, just go tell him what to do. He's just got to go uh, in the Jordan dip seven times. He'll be fine. And Naaman's like, what? I came all the way here for this? This guy can't even meet me? How many of you guys have ever been met with 
a cure or a prescription and you thought, that's it? There's no way that's it, right? There's no way that that's going to work, right? But sometimes it does. So Naaman, he, uh, in verse 12, he's still complaining. He's saying, are not the rivers in Damascus better than all these waters, right? Could I not wash in them? In other words, I could have just stayed home and done this. You know, I could have washed in my own rivers. But what's the point of this? And so he turned and he went away in a rage, but his servants came near and said to him, my father, it is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? He has, acted, he's, he has actually said to you, wash and be clean. Now, Naaman is furious, he's upset, but he does something here and it's really important. It's a key. It's a key to healing. He humbles himself. He humbles himself and he listens to his servants. He listens to those who in his eyes were lesser than him, right? He listens to these people and he turns around and he ends up following through. And so he walks into the river, steps into it, and he probably has to feel kind of foolish looking around. His, his guys are all watching him, you know, they're, some of them are cynical as well, right? So he starts dipping one two, he's probably three, four, five, you know, <laughs> he, gets to, he gets to number seven and he's clean. He's clean. So when we're sick, sometimes you just got to take your meds. It's that simple. But you have to follow through. See, God, like I said, Jesus died so that we could walk into his throne room. He is the great physician. He's the great physician. I've had a front row seat to seeing how this works. You see, my dad had leukemia when he was uh, in his 40s, uh, which is so weird. I'm in my 40s now, and I'm, like, scared. But he's, he had this leukemia. I was 16 years old, and I thought he was going to die, and we were all told he's going to die. And I saw what he did. What he did was he, he went straight to God, and he started asking God what to do. And God led him to the right doctors and led him to the right places. And so... I would encourage you guys, and I'm not saying not to go to doctors. Definitely go to doctors. Do you, do, if God leads you, you know, go to the places you need to go. But, but spend time and talk to him first. He is the great physician, and he will give you the, the things to do, but you have to follow through. See, that's the thing about obedience is you have to actually do it. Right? God will answer prayers, but he will often give us a responsibility in those prayers. And if we don't pray specifically, we won't hear specifically. And if we don't listen to and follow through on those things, then we'll be lost. We'll be confused and we'll be frustrated. You see, Naaman humbled himself. He did the silly thing. But it was the right thing for him. And in the process, he was healed. I'm not saying that everyone is healed of disease, but I do know that God will lead you through the process and he will be with you. Because there are scriptures that say that over and over. He will be with you. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. I have a ton of them. Right? So the four types of pain, it's doubt, sickness. The third one is injury. Now, Jacob, um, he wrestled with God, I believe um, it, it talks about, uh, I'm not going to read the scripture because it's, it's, I'm, I'm running low on time, but basically Jacob is on the run. He's running from his brother Esau, who he's done wrong, and his, Esau's trying to get revenge, he thinks anyway. And so he's really afraid of Esau, and he's, he's trying to flee the place where he's at, right? And he goes to this river, and he sends his family over, but he kind of stays back for some reason. And it, when he stays back, he's by himself. All of a sudden, he starts wrestling with it. It says, it says in, the, uh, in Genesis uh, 32, if you want to look it up, it says that he wrestles with a man. And it turns out that he was wrestling with God or a representative of God. And so the next one is injury. And I want to talk to you guys about what we do when we are injured. Jacob, as he was wrestling with God, he just, he refused to let go. He refused to, um, to stop fighting. And, and there was something to that, you know. He had like this fervor. He had this this um, this drive. But God, seeing that, he had to 
he had to interact with him. And in his wrestling, he ended up, it says that he touched the socket of his hip and, and his hip was dislocated. Now, I have had the privilege of having that injury myself. Um, I was snowboarding back when I was in my early 20s and I went off a jump and I landed and my, my hip socket popped right, right, right out of my, my, my femur bone, popped right out of socket. Not fun, not fun at all. Uh, it's very painful, extremely painful. And it's, it's also, um, it leaves you pretty much paralyzed. You can't move, right? I thought I was paralyzed. And uh, then, you know, they put me in an ambulance, drove down the hill, gave me lots of morphine. Um, and then I woke up the next day and apparently five guys had popped it back in, right? And um, I was okay, but I was sore, really sore. And the thing about Jacob, and, and um, I guess uh, I feel connected to the story a little bit, he, with his injury, he ended up having to limp for the rest of his life. And I think about injuries and I think about how some fully heal, right? Some injuries, they fully, fully heal. But some injuries, they, uh, they, they, they heal to a point, but there's a reminder of them. We might have a limp, right? We might be reminded of them. And I think about Jacob and what that must have meant to him to have that limp. That reminded him that he doesn't need to flee and run from people. He doesn't need to flee and run from man. He needs to stay put where God wants him. And if he fights with God in the process, right, that God will disable him to a point. And that disabling was really a reminder that God was still with him. And so when we have an injury, right, sometimes we need to adapt. And that could mean for a while, if you are injured, you could, uh, you could adapt for a while by resting. And I'm not talking about physical injury right now, by the way. I'm talking about actual injuries, things that have happened, brokenness, right? Something just isn't working. Something's not right in your life. And it also applies to physical too. But, but you have to adapt. You have to rest in order for that to heal. But sometimes, you know, your whole lifestyle will be different. There will be certain things that you stay away from because of that injury. You have to put protections in place. You have to adapt. And that's okay. That's good. Because that adapting is, is keeping you in the place that you're supposed to be. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So the fourth one, and this is my favorite one, is the pain of growth. Growing pains. I have two little girls, a three-year-old and a six-year-old. And sometimes they, just, they, they complain that their legs are hurting. They complain that their body's hurting. And there's no reason for it, so we chalk it up to growing pains, right? There, it's a real thing. And uh, how many of you guys know that once you start, even when you're an adult, you still have growing pains, right? Um, so Paul, um, he had growing pains. Paul suffered. If we are in, um, let's, let's go ahead and look at 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. And we'll look at that suffering. So 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10, Paul He says in verse 5, on my own behalf, I will not boast except for my weakness, okay? And and, and Paul was somebody who could have boasted because he was not only smart, he was one of the most effective. He was probably the most effective Christian leader at the time. He was the one who pretty much built the church. You know, Peter and John, they were all working too, but Paul was so influential. Most of the uh, writings that we have in the New Testament are written by Paul. Most of the things that we know today are written by Paul. So he had reason to boast, but he said that he wouldn't boast except for his weaknesses. If you go down to verse 7, it says, So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. It says this in verse 8, three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that that it should leave me. But he said, this is what God said to him in the prayer, right? Coming to the throne room. God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Let me read that again. My grace is sufficient for you, right? Apply this to yourself right now. His grace, his grace, the things he gives us, is sufficient. It's enough. You have everything you need right now, right? Because his power is perfected in our weakness. You see, there's a point where we end, where our limits are met, right? Like we end, and then there's a gap between where we should be and where we are. And in that gap, you know who stands there? 
Jesus Christ stands in that gap, right? And he enables us to be the person that we are with him. It's a co-mission, right? It's a togetherness, right? When you look in the mirror and you see someone you don't like, imagine that Jesus is right there with you and he has his arm around you. And he's saying, it's not, it's not you alone, it's you and me. It's you and me. And the bigger the gap, the bigger the Jesus. So that's all right, right? That's okay. Paul had these weaknesses. And I believe that the thorn, if you read through it, he's, talk, he's, he's really um, talking about these uh, religious leaders he's having a problem with. And so I think the thorn in the flesh was just this persecution that he was getting um, from these leaders. And so it, the reason I wanted to show you guys this, and let me, let me do the last, last one, suffers grow. You already knew that. So, um, the reason I wanted to share these leaders, and there's so many more that we could, I could probably do this with so many other uh, people in the Bible, is to show that we're not alone, right? And that God really is doing something in and through us, even if we don't feel it, even if we don't see it, even if we're confused, even if we're frustrated, even if we're tired, right? Even if you know you got to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow and you got to work for the man, right? Well, God's doing something. You know what? God, he's up at 5 a.m., so he'll be there waiting for you, right? And it's going to be okay. So let me talk to you guys really quickly. I'm going to have the, um, the worship team come out, and I'm going to share uh, three, three preventative cares, things that we should all be doing all the time, okay, to keep ourselves healthy. Three things, and then we're going to do communion, which is the ultimate healing. It's understanding who Jesus is. So the three things, number one, meditate on Scripture. Don't just read it, because the point of reading Scripture is not just to get head knowledge, right? It's to connect with God, right? It's not to understand the Bible, but to connect with the God of the Bible. That's the reason. So when we meditate on Scripture, we take a verse, like Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? You take that verse and you meditate on it daily. Like, I would encourage you guys to write down a verse or two and meditate on those for about 10 minutes each day this week. Just consider it. Ponder it. What does it mean? What does it mean? Look at every word. Consider it. What does it mean? What does it mean to me? How can I apply this to my life? And then see how it changes the way you think. See how it changes the way you behave. See how it changes, uh, you know, when, when that moment comes and somebody is frustrated with you and you get fired up and you get angry or you get frustrated or you get confused or sad or whatever it is. See how that changes you. When we meditate on his scripture and understand what it is for us, it changes us. So that's number one, meditate on scripture. Number two, examine yourself regularly. Examine yourself, look in the mirror, and yes, see Jesus, but also see the ways that you could give him more of your life. See the ways that you could do better. He wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us to get better, right? It's funny, I always think about prayers and how they're answered and how when I was younger, the prayers seemed like they were answered easier, and then I got older in my faith and it was harder, and I started thinking about that, and I thought, it's because I've grown up. Right? I'm an adult now. I, I, God's like, I'm not doing it for you this time, buddy. You know what you need to do. Have you guys ever prayed a prayer and stopped because you already knew the answer? Right? It's like God, God's like, come on. Come on. You're going to pray for help again? You got this. Sometimes we underestimate the power that we have through him that we've been given. Right? The third thing, and this is the most important, and... Um, and this is what we're going to do right now is focus on Jesus. Who is Jesus to you? Jesus Christ. Christ wasn't his last name. Christ was his title. It's who he was. He was the Messiah. He was the deliverer of us. He was our salvation. He is our salvation. He continues to deliver us. He continues to usher us into the presence of, of God, right? He continues to give us the things that we need. He's a provider. He's the healer. He's our Lord. He's our master. He's our owner. Think about who he is. And if you um, are in a place where you feel like you can do communion today, I would encourage you during this worship song to come up and do communion and focus on Jesus. Because that's the number one healing, right? That's the main healing. Um, if you're not comfortable doing it today, then don't do it. That's fine. But I'm just going to pray this over the believers and say, Lord, 
I pray that every single one of us would come to you today, trust you, learn to trust you more. Maybe we are in a place where we are doubting and we need to be honest about that. Maybe we're in a place where we're injured or sick or, or, or lonely or scared or many other things that I didn't even mention. I pray, Lord, that whatever that ailment is today, that we would understand what it is right now and we would lay that down at your feet. And that as we do this communion, that we would be thankful for the blood that you shed and that we'd receive that blood that you shed and that we'd be so thankful for the body that was broken and we would understand that we are a part of your body that was resurrected. Lord, we thank you for who you are. And we just let go. We let stop worrying. And we're going to trust you with everything that we got. In Jesus' name I pray.
just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I never want to leave you Oh, I'm not here for blessings She you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you we hope you got something out of that message We'd love to hear what God is doing in your life. Please feel free to email us at share at vbf.org. Also visit vbf.org for the latest information, following our social media accounts, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you again real soon.